So I want to take a step back and rewind a little bit. Um, the month is March, the year is 2005. I am 15 years old, sitting in a high school history class, staring out the window, daydreaming about cars, about girls, and basically everything but history. And uh, my teacher begins to tell us about a, a country in Africa that is currently going through a civil war over diamonds. And he begins telling us that there's children killed and losing limbs by refusing to work in these diamond mines. Uh, instantly, this kind of struck a spark. Um, I was curious to see the world uh, from a different perspective and maybe remove the blanket, so to speak. So let's fast forward. Uh, the month is March. The year is 2013. I'm staring out of the window of an airplane as I fly into Sierra Leone, Africa. Now, as we're coming into Africa, into Sierra Leone, um, it's getting dark out, and I'm looking out the window, and I notice that for a capital city of three million people, uh, there's not that many lights in Freetown. As a matter of fact, as we fly into Freetown, I see the, the airport letters, Freetown Airport, and only about two of the letters are even lit up. So as an electrical engineer, I think I could fix that. So we get into Freetown, I spent about a day there, and got a chance to see uh, the aftermath of this war. You know, buildings that have been torched that are still standing, uh, at night, they light their trash on fire just to have lights in the streets. Um, so we spent the day there and, and moved on to Injala. Now, Injala is a university in Sierra Leone that focuses on agriculture and plant soil science research. My time at Injala was to try and bring a new element to the table. That element is power and energy. So every day at Injala, I woke up, I hopped on a uh, Poda Poda, or a bike, with some of the students, and traveled around the campus and looked at the facilities and the labs and the equipment they're using to try and help them come up with a better means of using their energy more efficiently. And what we found is that they have one centralized location for power. They're running these generators. Uh, these generators cost them about $8 a day in fuel just to run. On top of that, they have to travel to Freetown and back to get the fuel, uh, $10 a day there, $10 a day back. Uh, all along, I'm paying about a dollar a day just to eat while I'm at Injala. So after spending my time there uh, discussing with the professors, you know, what we can do, uh, we picked one lab. This is the lab that we want to bring solar power to. Uh, we calculated the load and how much equipment they have in there and how much power this lab needs. And the idea is to decentralize the power on campus from these generators that are using a lot of power that isn't necessary to um, taking it and individualizing the power to these labs around the campus. So I returned back to OSU. I met with my partner and my mentor, Rupesh Agarwal, and we discussed the cost and the time and the effort needed to go into this project. And after meeting with Rupesh, uh, we decided about an eight kilowatt system would be necessary. We talked to the professors at Anjala, and unfortunately, they cannot provide the funding to make it happen. So our next step was to um, seek sources here at OSU. So we went, met with Dr. Craig Waters, and he gained interest in our project so much that he wanted to turn it into a social venture project for his class here at OSU. So we showed him a working model, something that is um, in process right now at Anjala, and his students are developing a proposal for us to use to gain our funding and begin this project in Sierra Leone. So you've seen a lot about Africa. I think a lot of people are afraid of Africa because there is a lot of poverty. Africa is definitely a, a place of corruption, a place of war, a place of disease. But what I want you to gather, and what I have gathered most importantly, is that Africa is a place of opportunity. Thank you.